Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bianca, I am an international student currently studying in the UK and I'm making two videos about my experience here, tips and tricks and everything in between. And today I'm joined by my sister. Hello. Okay, introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Shannon and like what she has already said, I'm her sister. Um, I'm currently working in the UK. I used to be an international student as well, so I took my master's degree here in the UK and then I continued on with um, a full-time job here in the UK. So, yeah. Okay, <laughs> now, could you talk a little bit about where you were before master's? So I did my undergrad in, in Canada and then I went back to Indonesia. Stayed there for about two years and a half-ish. I uh, worked... Um, in an investment bank and then I moved to a uh, consulting firm, a big four, not gonna mention the name, but... And then I moved uh, to the UK for, for masters when the opportunity came. What kind of opportunity was that and why did you decide to <laughs> um, study in the UK? And also maybe tell a little bit about your uh, the course that you took, why you took that course. All right, so there's a lot of questions. So you mentioned about opportunity. What I was referring to was the learning opportunity. So when I was, uh, so like I mentioned before, I worked uh, in a big four firm prior to, you know, moving to the UK and taking my master's. And during my last employment, basically, um, you know, throughout my career progression, um, and also I think given the nature of my role, which is very analytical, um, I feel like, you know, the importance of business analytics is kind of like growing. And I feel, you know, as, as, as much as I've, as much as I learned from my work experience um, back in my previous company, I felt like, you know, this is something that I want to further solidify my knowledge on. Because my background in undergrad is finance and I wanted to be able to kind of um, further, I guess, a specific go on more specific in terms of, you know, the knowledge that I, um, that I learn. And also I think, you know, master's degree in particular, it kind of gives you that opportunity. So yeah, and she's already in the UK. That makes all the perfect reason to move here. Yeah, so that, I think that's pretty much, I guess, the background as to why I chose to pursue your masters. Pursue, yeah. Um, in business analytics. In particular, yeah. What made you sort of pivot from, from that consulting industry-ish towards more analytics? Or oh, going on from financial consulting yeah, to, to data analytics. Yeah, because now you're working on like more of a, like an in-house yeah. data analytic role. Right? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess, you know, in a sense, it's, it's, uh, I think I got lucky as well. It's like, it's, it's like partially luck, I think, I guess, played such a big role. Um, but yeah, so long story short, uh, when I went for my master's degree, right off, like right from the start, I already knew that, you know, I wanted to, um, uh, pursue data analytics roles in more specific. So, yeah, not necessarily, you know, doing financial statement analysis anymore, uh, but more towards the data analytics because I think that opens up a whole, like, new door for you. Uh, not just kind of, you know, doing your financial analysis, you can do, like, other types of data analysis, right? So, um, so my master's degree in particular, they, uh, they gave you the option to either go for um, dissertation route or internship route uh, towards the end of your course. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, going for an internship, postgraduate internship would add more value to me personally because if you're talking, if you're talking about like my particular field, data analytics, it's, it's highly technical. Um, mm -hmm. And so I feel like, you know, technical experience is gonna add more value than dissertation or research. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, so I, anyway, uh, I got, long story short, I got into an internship program uh, in a company and I worked in a particular uh, data analytics project. And then from then, mm -hmm. you know, um, that kind of turned into my full-time job, which is what I'm currently doing now. In terms of career pivoting, like I said, you know, this is something that I know from the start, I wanted to kind of... Um, focus more on data analytics rather than just financial statement analysis. Okay. So you sort to of put it simply. Yeah. Um, it was 
out of my own, I guess, motivation, not something that happened. You know, some some people, they just kind of went with the flow in, the, in terms of like, you know, their career progression and it just yeah. kind of turned out that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it's something that I knew I wanted from the start. Um, so yeah, it yeah. kind of unfolded so you that sort way. Of, yeah, you sort of did a backward induction of where you want to be and then yeah. what can bridge you from where you were yeah. to where you want to be, yeah, which is yeah. through education yeah. yeah, to pursue your master's. Yeah. Okay. So like also if, if um, those of you who are you know pursuing your masters um, in the UK or anywhere in the world um, and you know looking to settle in that specific country to work you know for for however many years or even like for a longer for a more longer term like she said doing internship uh, rather than doing dissertation will probably help yeah because it exposes you to the company. And if you work well, if, if, if you really deliver, uh, there is a potential that you would be offered a full-time role. And I think I want to add on that because um, you have to be strategic as well in terms mm. of the company that you pick because, um, and again, this depends on which country you're studying at. Um, in particular in the UK, uh, not all companies can just kind of sponsor your visa, work permit. Um, what do you call that? A uh, work visa. Tier, tier two yeah, work tier visa. two visa in particular. Yeah. So you gotta be strategic as well in terms mm-hmm. of what companies you wanna pick uh, when you go for internship. If you are actually thinking about, you know, pursuing a, yeah. I guess, a full time job, um, I guess internship is perhaps like a good um, starting point. Starting point, yeah, yeah. for for you to some sort of get some exposure, build your uh, rapport, and all and all that. You were offered two roles, right? One in like the, your current company, and the other one, which is like a more of a, a niche startup, yeah, startup. startup company, a marketing analytics company, but they're not um, registered like tier mm-hmm. two work visa sponsor at the time. Not yeah. sure about now, and so that kind of played a significant, um, I guess, role when I was determining, you know, which, which company should I pick. Also, apart from that, the company that I, that I ended up picking and staying in until now is like a lot bigger and also in terms of, I guess, exposure, mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, there's a lot of more opportunities and so yeah, that makes um, all the reason. Yeah. So you worked for two and a half years and also like you did an internship before that, mm-hmm. um, before deciding that you want to do a master's. Do you think having that experience, that work experience, help you in any way in doing a master's? Yeah, for my again, I'm talking from my personal experience. Having a master's degree is good, mm-hmm. but then you gotta have that um, practical experience as well. Um, and this is one thing that is up for debate. You know, yeah. some people kind of uh, think that uh, you want to get it over with. Yeah, then. so you're done with your undergrad, you go right away for your master's. Yeah. Uh, and I, to be very honest with you, I see a lot of my friends who struggle to get a job because mm. of that. Um, but again, this is just from my personal experience. I know there yeah. are a lot of bright students out there who can still get a job like after, like you know, going full force after undergrad and pursuing masters without having that gap, I guess, mm. between in between. Um, but yeah, definitely in my case, they really value that past work experience, yeah. even though it's only two years and a half. But I can say that, you know, that's one thing that I'm, my um, employer or my boss really explicitly mentioned, um, you know, on top of this. Um, <clears throat> you know, we look at your past experience as well, and that's yeah. why we chose you. Bottom line, work experience uh, helps. Yeah, I think it also depends on the country, because if yeah, you look... Or the company you're looking for, yeah. for and the level. Yeah, because um, like if, for instance, so, so this is what I've heard from you know other friends who are currently in Indonesia, and I believe like maybe most of the viewers are also Indonesians. Yeah. Um, I think the the trend that we see is that back home, like in Indonesia, pedigree and like university degree yeah. and your grades really matters. Like they they put that on top of um, all the other things. Not saying that work experience doesn't matter, but pedigree is very important back home. But here. Pedigree only gets you to the door. Like people yeah. don't really see your uh, like which university you graduate from, or even like if you have a master's. Like people yeah. just see like okay, the what's practical, up? Yeah. practical skills. Like True, what's yeah. your um, yeah? At the end of the day, it's what value you bring to the table, True, right? Yeah. And having that degree in the paper does not really say much. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the only way to prove it is through. Um, work experience yeah. or other site projects that you do, not necessarily paid work experience. Yeah. Um, if you can show that, if if you know you if you're active and 
again, right? Curio mm -hmm. uh, curiosity, like curious to apply that uh, in the real world, be active, so on and so forth. So yeah, I guess that's true. That's um, that's just more important. Yeah. So I mean, like, let let us know what you think. Like, do you think um, going for like a like full force going for a master's after you finish undergraduate is a better strategy, or do you think it's better to you know work? For yeah. a few years and then um, do your masters. Maybe your experience in that, and you know, may, may want to share your experience. And definitely, feel free to comment. <laughs> yeah, and again, yeah. I think it depends on the industry, right? Yeah. The field, and also what you want personally. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot, a lot, lot of, of there's a lot of other factors yeah, that sure. come into play. Yeah. So last question for the day. I think you know I've heard of this a lot, and I believe you have already too. Um, a lot of international students are saying that. It's very difficult to get a job in the UK, almost impossible. But you know, like you see these two people in this frame. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've I, I've got you know my um, sort of full time, a year long internship or what is called placement year or sandwich year, and then she got you know a full time job in the UK. Um, you know, I, I mean, like this in itself is that it is not impossible. Oh, we have a lot of other friends as well. Yeah, and um, um, yeah, yeah. would you like to, to talk more about like your opinion on that and you know, how, how what are the things that you think would be helpful for these students uh, if they are an international student and you know, looking to settle in the UK and work here? I think I have to agree with that part when, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, when we mentioned uh, it is difficult. It is difficult because at the end of the day you are competing in very, I guess, in a very competitive uh, Job lo local job market, right? And you have to compete against all of these other, I guess, uh, locals, right? And also and other international. Yeah, you gotta you gotta find ways um, to stand out yeah. almost. Um, but at the bottom line, I think to to start to start with, uh, from my perspective, because I guess it's, it's it's gonna be quite different if you're talking about um, going for I guess a fresh grad role versus like a uh, postgraduate level, because with postgrad, what I feel like. You already know it's some, you know, it's, it's, to a certain extent, yeah, you already know extent, yeah, what you want to do. You, yeah, you already know what you want to do, right? So, start with that know what you want to do, you know, what kind of um, skills do you have, what kind of roles you use yourself working at, and then start um, start looking for those. I guess, you know, it's, nowadays it's very, um, they really make it, make it a lot easier for you. To, to kind of, you know, you can just type in your keywords uh, and then go for, you know, search for search from there. But on top of that, I think being mindful that, you know, we are international students, so we need to have companies who can sponsor us that tier two work permit. So yeah. I guess on top of searching for a specific role, um, you know, or, or job vacancy, you have to also make sure that the company you're applying for is listed in, in that yeah, um, tier two sponsor register list. sponsor list, so yeah, I guess do a lot of research. That would be yeah. my, I guess, my first um, tip. Because yeah. you do don't a lot wanna, of research. Yeah. There's nothing easy that comes with this. There's sure. no shortcut. You gotta put a lot of effort, a yeah. lot of time and effort. Yeah. And I think this is where a lot of people give up. Yeah, because they feel like you know, um, you just type in keywords, spread my CVs, and wait yeah. for a call. Doesn't work like that. You yeah. have to do your research, customize your CV. Um, this is, I think, this is one of, a, I guess, cliche, one of the most cliche advice I would say. I hear this a lot of, a, a lot, a lot of times. And um, at the beginning, I was like, you know, I didn't really <laughs> believe that. You know, when when people, when people say customize your CV when you're tailor your CV, yeah. tailor your CV. But yeah, I'm telling you, you, you have, have to. to. You yeah. have to. Um, don't even ask why you're not getting a, I guess, a job interview call if you're not doing that already. Yeah. So customize your CV, um, and that's where a lot of effort and attention and <laughs> time will be spent on, right? Yeah. Research. So that's one. Second is that making sure that a company is a register because you don't want to spend or waste your time, time. You know, spend a lot of time doing all these applications only to realize that none of them. Is yeah. a registered tier to sponsor, yeah. and then third is I guess um, because job search can be daunting, can be demotivating, especially if you're doing it on your own. Yeah. So I think one thing that really kind of kept my spirit up when I was kind of going through all this application process 
is finding myself a community of um, you know similar I guess people of similar uh, oh, backgrounds yeah. you know people who've gone through what, you were uh, what I want to go through yeah. what I, you know what I was going through <laughs> uh, I guess mentorship so I think last year at the beginning of my I guess this whole uh, job vacation you know finishing my master's degree blah 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 um, I got into a mentorship program with IPA which is you know young to Young Indonesian Professionals Association. Association in the UK, um, and it is actually a very, very great place, or you know, great community um, to to kind of um, immerse yourself in. Yeah. Uh, because um, at the very least, it kind of it kind of gives you that motivation because you look at all these other people who've scored. Uh, job, you know, full time jobs yeah. here in the UK and big companies. And hearing from their stories, yeah. you know, you might pick up, yeah. And again, right, it's depending on the industry, depending on, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, the level, the yeah. job, blah, blah blah blah. So there's a lot of other factors, but community, I think, is also one important yeah. um, aspect of it. Sure. Um, especially if you are a foreigner, at the end of the day, you're a foreigner, mm -hmm. um, and um, not everyone, you know, goes through. What you're going yeah, through. the same process and having a community that can relate to you and also people that you can ask yeah. advice um, um, from yeah. is going to be at the very least mentally. Yeah, <laughs> Men will help you mentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah will help Gives you, you that mental um, sort strength, of strength, I guess, to, yeah. to, to, to push on. Yeah. And I've heard a lot of other stories as well from you know people who actually didn't even <clears throat> think about getting a job, but after the you know, attend. Yeah, yeah, not not trying to do you yeah, know, <laughs> promote, it, but, but at the bottom line, you know, community wherever you are, mm -hmm. I guess having that, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna be awesome. Helpful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that is it for today's session. Okay. If you have any follow up question, then just leave it in the comment section, and if if there's like a, a lot of it, then we can do like a follow up session, like pillow talk kind sure. of video. But yeah, thank you very much. For You're being very welcome. Video. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, if you like this kind of contents where I like interview people who are successful, <laughs> uh, let me know, and I can definitely do more of it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.